for a patient at a high risk of suicide, should you prescribe lithium? Will that raise risk since lithium is potentially lethal in overdose? Or might it lower risk, as multiple epidemiologic studies have suggested? The United States Veterans Administration, the VA, recommended lithium in their 2019 guidelines for the management of patients at risk of suicide. Have you been following that recommendation? Do you want to see some data supporting it? Hi, Jim Phelps here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. Somewhat ironically, before putting that recommendation in their guidelines in 2019, the VA designed a study to test the value of lithium as a suicide prevention agent way back in 2013. The results were just published in November 2021. Let's see if those results support the 2019 recommendation. Here's the study design. You need a population at high risk of suicide, right? Otherwise, this study could take a really long time. So let's see. What's one of the best predictors of a subsequent suicide attempt? Right, a recent suicide attempt. So the investigators recruited veterans who had a suicide attempt or hospitalization to prevent it within the previous six months. Across 29 VA centers, during a recruitment period of about four years, they identified 22,000 such veterans. Wow, 22,000 patients with a suicide attempt or plan to do so. Let that number sink in a moment. Following a long list of exclusion criteria, like being pregnant or not using birth control or being on a diuretic and nine others, they narrowed to 521 patients who were randomized to lithium or a placebo. And why am I telling you so much about the study design? Why not just cut to the outcomes? Well, hang on. Lithium was started at 600 milligrams a day, but if not tolerated, it could go back down to 300 milligrams a day. And the goal was to get to a serum level of 0.6 to 0.8 milliequivalents per liter. So this is what I'd call medium dose lithium, not like treating active mania, but not subtherapeutic either. Given the effects of trace lithium in epidemiologic studies, at least we can say, well, this ought to be plenty of lithium. They didn't underpower the dosing. The primary outcome measure is, as you'd expect, a suicide or a suicide attempt. But of course, there's a medical treatment team involved that wants to prevent suicide. So there might be relatively few episodes requiring a large sample. But the study was interrupted midway through. Why? Because the midpoint results suggested, quote, futility. The team preordained that midway through, they'd have a blinded look at the results and decide whether to keep going because this was such a huge and long undertaking. And those results, patients taking lithium, were no less likely to attempt or complete suicide than those taking placebo. Credit to the team and the journal, that's JAMA Psychiatry, for publishing this negative result, and without much statistical wiggling either to explain it. The team did note a predominance of depression, not bipolar disorder, implying that perhaps lithium might have more of an anti-suicide effect in patients with bipolar disorders. And here's an important finding. More than half of the patients in each group, lithium and placebo, stopped taking their study medications during the trial. Attrition in a study that goes on for a year is, of course, going to be a problem. But recall that several studies have found that people who stopped lithium had a higher rate of relapse into subsequent bipolar mood episodes than those who had never started lithium in the first place. So one could worry that suicide rates might be higher in this study amongst patients who stopped lithium. And that was true. Their risk was almost three times higher. But the same was true for patients who stopped taking placebo. Their rate also was about three times higher than those who did not stop taking placebo. The suicide rates in each group went up in both cases to about the same extent. 
to conclude, several years of moderate dose lithium did not lower suicide or self-harm rates. Since the data from epidemiologic studies strongly suggest an effective exposure to trace doses over many years can actually lower suicide, one can't conclude that lithium has no anti-suicide effect. Rather, it may be that starting lithium after symptom onset has no anti-suicide effect, or that this veteran population is not representative of the general public, or that the medical care patients received in this study was sufficiently strong to lower the floor of suicide risk such that there wasn't really any room for a subtle lithium effect to appear, no further down the rate could go in this population. For more on this, see the article for interesting details regarding lithium levels and the maintenance of blinding.